Um, again, welcome everybody to the webinar, How to Fight State Aid Cases Through a Full uh, Value Chain Analysis, Starbucks and uh, Apple Cases. Um, the agenda is the alignment between operating margin sales and um, FTEs. We have um, uh, different examples on a value chain analysis, and especially then the uh, Apple case and the Starbucks case. And there is also, um, let's say, final remarks and um, room for more questions from your side. If we um, follow the agenda and we go to, um, to the next slide. Then we see one of the methods to be used as a value chain analysis uh, technique, and that's the alignment between the operating margin sales and uh, FTEs, or you can also see it as an alignment between the uh, economic reality and the, um, um, let's say, the uh, transfer pricing reality. Um, if we look at the first pie chart on the operating margin, in this example, China has an operating margin of 7%, whereas the Netherlands have an operating margin of uh, 43%. Um, if you go to the next pie chart, we see that China has 9% whereas the Netherlands have 54, but in the last pie chart we see that basically the majority of uh, people is working in China, whereas um, a small percentage of the total number of worldwide employees is working in the Netherlands. This could trigger questions from the Chinese tax authorities as they could take the judgment that there is a, a misalignment between profit allocation and value add. Yeah, and this, this is uh, like quantifying your value chain, uh, where you started probably with the oral industry analysis and then make a yeah, kind kind of uh, reflection of your uh, company and where is it positioned in in uh, if you compare it to the industry analysis. So you've done the, the qualitative uh, description already and describing what are your your yeah, strategic or competitive uh, key drivers or uh, advantages compared to the industry you're operating in. And that's a, that's a, that's a, a good thing to say, uh, uh, Igor, because um, a competitive advantage means also that it is not an inward-looking analysis, but it's um, actually also uh, a more um, general analysis of your industry. And where is your competitive advantage compared to um, your um, your peers? Um, where is your um, value add, what is your, let's say, core uh, competencies compared to uh, the total uh, industry. And, um, and, and, and of course, there it is that most of the value add uh, is taking place. And therefore, also, most of the remuneration should be allocated to those functions that you have identified as being key for uh, your value add functions. Exactly, yeah. where, where you then have these, these pie charts or any diagram uh, you may use to uh, show how, how is your operating margin or where are the sales realized or where are the uh, FTEs uh, located. And we, you can imagine any other uh, pie charts uh, if your um, industry or your company especially is uh, well heavy on, on uh, capital usage and by, by fixed assets or other assets where you can make a pie chart with intangibles. So 
So you can relate the operating margin or profits or, or net profits to fixed uh, assets, assets. All kinds of uh, yeah, diagrams that are yeah, typical for your uh, industry, but also typical for your company in order to have the tax authorities yeah, as easy as possible understand what's happening in the whole value chain before he starts digging into uh, well, ultimately the local files and uh, your, your yeah, reconciliation of your local uh, numbers. Yeah, and then um, because you mentioned uh, intangibles, and there of course you should make the correlation or the association with uh, them P functions. Uh, where do they, where do these uh, function take place, and is there uh, a correct alignment with the uh, operating margin or a profit attribution? Um, there is also um, um, a distinction between uh, what I would call uh, old economy and new economy uh, companies, because, uh, for example, uh, Amazon, you can imagine that they can have um, a good, let's say, uh, a good explainable um, um, misalignment between, for example, employees and operating margin, uh, because it's, it's basically a virtual uh, company. It's, it's a virtual business model, whereas, for example, old economy style companies uh, like a steel, or um, uh, or oil or anything that is very tangible, you can imagine that their fixed assets or employees are a really good um, uh, indication for where does their the, the 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 value attribution take place. Yeah, so you mentioned hey, in the, the blue box, the higher the delta, and the greater the need to provide explanations to the tax authorities which in our view is something you would take up in your uh, master file. It's like the, the saying, what is it, comply or explain. Exactly, exactly. So it doesn't mean that a misalignment um, is, um, um, let's say, the, the, um, a, 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 a reason for a correction or an audit. Um, you have to be able to explain why this obvious or um, uh, appearing misalignment takes place, and, and if you have any good reasons, then um, this will be sufficient uh, to substantiate your, well, in this case, your, your, your CBC, for example. Yeah, that, that's, I think, one of the, the other uh yeah, information you are providing, uh, that, that's typically you would make a pie chart or you would do a ratio analysis already, and yeah, more, more internally looking than, than externally, but also there you might have some uh, misalignment, or seemingly, it's more uh, seemingly misalignment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But that's, I think, uh, the remark of Patrick, it's very important to, to have a, yeah, proper industry analysis and really have also an outward looking view when you are performing your value chain analysis. It's not just focusing on numbers and, and it might look like it because we show here your, uh, your pie charts. It's, it's uh, a relative thing. You need so if we go to the to the next uh, next slide there we see actually the um, the explanation that we just uh, just gave um, um, although you have a seemingly misalignment um, it, it it doesn't have to be um, because there is different uh, uh, business models there is different industries you have old and new economy um, uh, companies so based on those uh, specifics of your company and the industry where it is uh, doing business, it, is, um, um, it, it may be a good explanation why a seemingly misalignment 
um, is not, uh, in fact, uh, a misalignment, only uh, looks like that. But based on the knowledge and based on your explanation of the context, it, uh, it might well be um, a good allocation and the right allocation of operating margin. Any pie chart it shows less profits or operating margin in China with a lot of FTEs uh, in your value chain. Of course, you will see part of it is uh, assembly work or uh, yeah, relatively low value adding uh, production uh, activity. So that's an uh, easy explanation already for that seemingly uh, misalignment. So if we um, if we, if we go further to the uh, to the Apple Apple case on the next slide, this is the um, the structure that uh, that was um, um, taking place that had been implemented. Um, basically, there was um, two companies in which um, um, Apple was uh, was doing business. And um, that was uh, sales and operations. Uh, sales um, Apple uh, Sales International was the one that that uh, took most of the profit away from the European operations, and um, they were at the same time um, shifting profits uh, to Bermuda. Um, because there had taken place um, a shift of residency from Ireland to uh, to Bermuda, and the um, the other uh, thing how they shifted profit away from Ireland was by um, a cost sharing agreement with Apple Inc. for development of new technologies, which meant in the end that the taxable base in Ireland itself was very, very low. Um, the uh, European Commissioner has, has, um, 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 has shared with us the, the facts, so it is not a full picture that we have. That's one of the remarks that we need to, need to make. Um, but based on, on, on her analysis, we, uh, we see that the taxable base and therefore the total European tax paid by Ireland is very, very low and, and was mentioned by her as being uh, 0.005% of the um, uh, total profit, which is, which is um, maybe not as low as we think it is, uh, we think they paid a little bit more, but based on her calculation, it's still, and based on our calculation, it's still um, very, very low. And that's where we're, uh, the question is where where comes in, in uh, from a TP point of view, uh, why, why is it then state aid? And what is then the selective uh, benefit? And looking at the, uh, documents that, that were published. Uh, please note that the final version is not yet in the public domain. We're still uh, anonymizing uh, the, the decision. Uh, where there is a big group of workers, I think meanwhile there are around four or five thousand, or perhaps six, but uh, remuneration of that island company is done on a cost plus basis. And so that, that's where the taxable income seemingly is fixed compared to uh, a huge and, and fast increased uh, sales volume. So there you see a strong misalignment between the taxable basis and the sales volume. And one of the triggers for, for also the commission to start their research and partially also which they base their decision on, that it is in fact uh, state aid. And where, where would a total value chain analysis 
bring uh, enlightenment to, well, perhaps step one, to the tax authorities. I think Apple is, of course, typically a company heavily relying on intangibles. So you would also need to look in the whole value chain. Where are those um, intangibles being uh, maintained? Yeah? Where is the value creation? That, of course, is not visible in the document that is uh, published yet. But most likely, uh, it is um, yeah, performed. And then you look again at the DEMPE functions uh, with the uh, full exposure or, or full uh, providing of information. Uh, where is that exactly being uh, performed? And where is exactly then the taxable income being uh, reported? Uh, not, notwithstanding that this is also a classical, uh, perhaps BEP structure with uh, so-called white income. Mm. Still, from from a value chain analysis, you would be able to allocate, I think, the income to the uh, people performing. Well, and then if you go to the step um, of identification of the um, uh, responsibility centers, then in in a structure that um, uh, that we have seen, there is no matchmaking uh, taking place. Um, um, between supply and demand, so there is no residual profit allocation um, to any of the companies in Europe, but uh, only um, uh, a routine kind of uh, fee uh, being allocated. And then if you go to Bermuda and you would say there is an investment center because intangibles are um, are um, uh, being allocated to Bermuda, then it is not the intangibles that should be the lead of uh, profit allocation. It should be the, the, the dampy functions that would be performed in Bermuda. And, 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 and that is an, an, another thing that is missing within the, within the structure. There is no sufficient substance on dampy in Bermuda. So there are several several lacking um, elements that are crucial for, let's say, the total picture um, being the responsibility center, being the profit center, being the uh, DEMPI functions. Yeah, exactly. Go to the next slide. And then there we have... On the next slide, we have um, Tim Cook versus uh, Margrethe uh, Verstager. Um, of course, they um, are opponents in this case. Um, at the same time, there's an interesting remark by um, uh, the Lex Colm column. Um, Apple's punishment is unprecedented in its har harshness and at the same time, a much better deal than it could have expected to get in the U.S. Because given the fact that the U.S. would have taxed Apple on a 40% um, for its taxable income in the U.S., but as long as they could um, postpone the, um, let's say, the, 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 the tax, um, um, the, 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 the tax bill. Um, based on a deferral uh, created on Bermuda, which um, in the end, with let's say the, the, the fine being being put on on, on Apple um, of um, a 13 billion, still a 13 billion on all profits being made on its European operations is um, uh, basically less then the 40% that would have been uh, charged by U.S. if they would have um, 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 uh, allocated their uh, profits to the U.S. and not having this structure in place. And where, where uh, you would have 
uh, perhaps it's good to go to, to the next slide. Huh? If you, if you uh, where where comes the value chain analysis in 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 view in well helping or solving this this case is of course again if you look at where is the value created and the article surrounded and. Uh, as mentioned already, Vestager urges other uh, well, tax authorities to examine figures. A lot of uh, countries, and, and I think it was mainly opposition at this moment, were pushing uh, public opinion that, for instance, Germany should get part of this 13 billion. And with a proper uh, value chain analysis, I think it's uh, should we go to this slide hey, with a more visual of what, what's happening within the Apple value chain. And where's the hardware being uh, assembled? Foxconn, I think they're mainly uh, at present in, in Asian countries, China. Where is the, I don't see it here, but a lot of the design functions are not being performed in Ireland. So that part of the, the value chain is already out of scope. You might say, where is part of the marketing done, and that might be developed in outside of Ireland, so in, in the U.S. and actually perhaps uh, performed or, or almost assembled or rolled out in Ireland and the relevant European country. So there you could allocate part of the value chain. The sales, a lot of sales are being done uh, online for uh, Apple. That's ninety percent. Ninety percent of the sales take place online. Then the uh, the other part is taking place by uh, either third party uh, sellers and uh, and their own uh, Apple stores, where the Apple stores are not um, the profit makers or uh, profit centers because they are used as a marketing tool. They are used as an expense uh, for promoting the products and to um, um, convince people to buy an Apple product either online or in that store. So um, what, what, is, what is lacking again there is, a, there is no uh, responsibility center called profit center um, there is um, um, a comparable being the third party, but ne nowhere back in this structure we see um, within, uh, let's say, the affiliated parties, we see such um, a, a, a price uh, coming back for one of the transactions taking place. Yeah, so go, going, uh, looking at the first slide with all our uh, pie charts, if you would uh, depict this visual into pie charts, you might have already a completely different uh, view on the total value chain. Uh, because then you would see a lot of uh, FTEs outside Ireland being um, active in the, in the production, uh, perhaps leading or doing quality control at uh, the Foxconn uh, factories, seeing who is uh, uh, leading these Apple stores. And like in your local file, you would report also the reporting lines of those people. Uh, quite likely they are uh, not going to Ireland, but to a marketing department somewhere in the U.S. And uh, that's well, we we could take a stance that actually this this um, this structure in which the the U.S. is losing uh, money, and so apart from the from the EU, especially the U.S. Uh, is lacking tax money because the deferral can take place forever, and. Um, and they allow this to all American outward uh, investment companies like Apple, like Starbucks, uh, um, you, you, you mentioned, and um, giving them um, or allowing them to put an aggressive tax structure, maybe even to 0%, right? 
which means that um, if, if, if it would be half half, 40% in the US, maybe low percentage, say 0% outside of the US, which makes uh, based again on a half half um, um, allocation um, an average um, effective tax rate of 20%. Yeah, which is more in line with other European companies. Which is more in line with other, yeah, global companies even. And then, of course, because the U.S. Um, says, hey, this is uh, our interest, and it was our decision to allow this kind of um, aggressive tax structure, they have written to the commissioner saying um, in a white paper, this is a re re retroactive revision um, of the definition of state aid and made several legal claims because yeah, in the end they are the ones who give the credit on the 13 billion um, of additional tax whenever the money comes back to the US. So they are the ones that are, that, that, that Anyway, are losing in this case. Yeah, which, which uh, perhaps from a value chain point of view, they they should not be losing. Uh, it's it's perhaps if you have a proper uh, VCA done, you would see it's not profit that could be in any way allocated to the non-US activities. But even then, if, if especially when all the uh, relevant VCA functions would take place in the US, mm -hmm. then especially the 13 billion would put um, a very hard um, um, punishment on, 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 the, on the structure. Because if, if they claim 100 and they have to um, um, see the, the, the European Union go away with 13, then they, they are the one who lack it. They miss it. Yeah, as we see it, and this will typically be a case that, that initially starts with uh, double taxation, and uh, yeah, hopefully within the next, uh, let's be optimistic, 10 years, this is solved, and also here, double taxation was uh, released. Okay, let's go on with, uh, with the next slide, which gives um, the Starbucks case. In a, in a value chain analysis context. Um, the things that are important here are the um, limited partnership in the UK, which really was a, uh, a legacy structure which started in the, in the UK probably 15 years ago and was transformed in a more, let's say, tax-friendly way by um, by the, the transfer pricing um, operating model uh, in which the Netherlands uh, took an important uh, uh, part and um, um, where the uh, Starbucks manufacturing um, EMEA BV was buying green beans from Starbucks uh, Switzerland, um, actually holding the operations in Europe and uh, seeing the um, uh, profit shifted by paying a high royalty to the limited partnership in the UK, which was a transparent company um, or a partnership, and for that reason not being taxed in the UK, but seen as um, a long arm of the of the US, but for um, a, a check the box reason was not um, being taxed immediately by the U.S., but a deferral for the, um, for the taxable income that, uh, that was allocated to, uh, to the LP. So the, this, the, the, the view that the commissioner takes in this case is um, several. They uh, claim the green beans were bought by uh, BV for a too high price which means that um, that um, 
the taxable base in the in the, in, the, in the Netherlands was eroded, and uh, the second thing was that they said the royalty being paid to the UK was a too high one, and I even claim that uh, there were third parties that that were in similar situations not paying any royalty. So that mean that meant that um, the taxable base in the, in, the, in the Netherlands was eroded in two ways. Also here, um, there were only routine functions being identified. So um, what we see here is is the same as in the in the Apple case. There were no matchmakers um, being provided with a residual profit. Only routine functions uh, being identified, and um, 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 having said that, the commissioner claims that that should not be the case for BV as also marketing and, and market uh, research functions were taking place over there. So there were more. Um, there was there was a more. Um, principal function than a routine function taking place in the in the BV. Yeah, and I think yeah, also here uh, would would uh, proper value chain analysis and and even uh, a more more easy to adopt one uh, using uh, pie charts. Uh, you would see immediately, I guess. Okay, where are the Functions located doing this uh, matchmaking. Okay, where are these uh, recipes that were being used by the by the Dutch and also perhaps the, the third parties being developed uh, based on on the, you know, the the relative quality of the green beans. That would have been clear that where these these people were located that it is not in the Netherlands. They are, they are using it, but not developing it. And similar for the, the yeah, important function, the sourcing, yeah, that's located in uh, Switzerland. So, so there, um, proper uh, value chain analysis uh, by simply using pie charts would already yeah, visualize the, the location of all the functions. So um, this is our view. It, again, it is based on the facts being provided by the commissioner. Uh, we don't have the full view on, let's say, uh, the Starbucks case from the the, the stance point of uh, of Starbucks uh, itself. Um, so maybe we are lacking facts, but um, um, if that is the case. And they would come up with um, with a better explanation of why and what was the economic function of BV. Uh, it might well be the case that they could um, uh, explain, because from the facts itself being provided to us, it is um, it is um, um, let's say a, a, a leaking, lacking structure. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 information provided in the decision is, I think, especially with uh, TP uh, perspective, perhaps kind of uh, minimal. Uh, where we uh, again, uh, what what we think a proper value chain analysis might have uh, avoided a lot of uh, misunderstanding, and I think you're not. Per se, doing it for for uh, I guess your your master file only. A lot of text audits uh, start, and now yeah, recalling my own experience, you would start with uh, initial introduction of, of yourself, uh, the company, all the people that might provide the information, but. In most cases, I've started to explain the relevant uh, tax inspectors 
also at which part of the company are they at this moment looking eh? when when you're visiting them in uh, they they are visiting you in in Germany then it's quite important you very explicitly explain them already okay at exactly which yeah uh, minimal part eh, you are within a global organization at what 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 activities are being performed in Germany and in relation to the whole value chain so you can set already the, the focus of the relevant tax inspector okay now you are investigating the uh, activities or the value creating activities in Germany so that that's also I think where uh, value chain analysis Perhaps you, you have already one in, in your presentation you will use for all the tax audits around the globe, uh, setting the, the scene. And then um, if the UK is so important because they have, um, let's say, the intangible knowledge on how to roast beans, how many people were on the payroll? How many DEMPI functions were on the payroll in the UK? And um, so, let's say, if you if you would make pie charts on the model um, that we have at hand here, then um, you will probably see misalignments between several several uh, important entities or um, entities that were uh, seemingly important because of the allocation of operating margin, but not as important if you would uh, see and compare what kind of uh, knowledge is at hand in those companies or what kind of people are on the payroll. Yeah, making, uh, as as making um, a pie chart or an overview of the Dempe functions performed for the roasting recipes and might have shown that that's not clear from the doc published documents of course but perhaps there was only a um, uh, kind of IP lawyer present in the UK so only the protection function might have been performed from the UK uh, which is uh, I think considered to be a low value adding function or relatively low at least and uh, the actual you know, development or, or enhancement and the, the maintenance of the recipe yeah, based on the, the latest harvest of coffee beans might have been performed somewhere else so at least from would you do this from a UK perspective a very small part would be allocated to the UK and at that moment it would have been clear that a huge part is developed somewhere else so it might be in Switzerland where they are buying the beans and analyzing them perhaps already on their roasting quality or is it experience in the US where they also have roasted already these beans so the pie chart already would show it's it's not in the UK and similarly from uh, yeah, a Dutch perspective perhaps you might have seen already it's not being performed in the Netherlands either so um, from these examples it's, 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 it's clear that a good transparent view on your value chain and where are the important functions being performed what are your important processes and um, by which business units slash entities um, are these um, uh, functions taking place um, it is um, 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 it is now by OECD um, prescriptions guidelines um, obliged to make one if it comes to a profit split um, it's mentioned in the discussion draft on profit splits. It's being mentioned um, in, in, in the BEPS actions uh, 8 to 10, um, although not, um, let's say, a, a step plan. It's not a method 
that's being obliged. It's only, uh, let's say, the result of um, a value chain analysis is being mentioned, which means that you always have to look for the best uh, representation of your value chain uh, to be analyzed and to give insight in what is where being performed. Um, I think it's, it's good to have some concluding remarks um, based on what we just have said. Um, there are several techniques on value chain analysis. The pie chart is one of them, but there are also more, um, even more, um, let's say, basic um, elements of economic knowledge like porters, um, value chain, uh, and other, let's say, more economic um, gurus who have invented a kind of representation how to approach a, a well-performed um, um, value chain analysis. And compared to, to, I think, what you mentioned earlier, Patrick, that that's really important to keep in mind, I think, uh, your, your outlooking element of your value chain and, yeah, you should be able to reflect on, on the industry analysis to your own value chain analysis and then point out all the, the important differences or the important value drivers of, of especially your um, company. Yeah, so what is your competitive advantage? What are your core competencies? Um, how does your company distinct itself to uh, its peers? Um, what is the role of your company given uh, the industry in which it is uh, uh, working? Um, those those um, characteristics, um, um, holistic characteristics even, should be mentioned in your value chain analysis to give the right context and the right view because sometimes a seemingly misalignment can well be explained based on what it is doing and um, uh, in which industry it is performing. Then there is a distinction between old economy and new economy. Um, uh, let's say a, a more virtual business model of course is is given another picture than, uh, let's say, an old economy company in which um, it goes on fixed assets, number of employees, uh, capital intense companies. So that's, that's, uh, that's the, the context that you need to give to be able to give a good insight in the specifics of your company and its value chain. Then um, we looked at uh, the Apple case and we looked at the Starbucks case. In both cases, we see um, a good matchmaking function is lacking. We see uh, a deferral taking place um, in which the US is basically the one who, who pays the bill on, on, on any um, uh, claims by the European commissioner. Uh, for example, on the on the Apple case, in the in the in the um, in the amount of uh, 13 billion. Uh, that's why they have written a white paper. That's why they uh, support Apple in this case because in the end they are the one who are missing on money. And um, if we go to the the, the last slide, um, we see that um, in all, in all uh, structures that we discussed today, being um, under scrutiny for state aid, there is substance missing, substance on DEMPI functions, where royalty is an important um, 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 flow of, 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 of income going to um, an entity in which um, the, 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 the full 
um, important um, functions are missing to claim the full amount on royalties for um, 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 work being done done or intangibles um, being hide the being hidden. So um, maybe we can have a look at uh, at the questions. Yeah, uh, one of the questions is: Do we really always need a value chain analysis in our master file? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, the I think common sense approach is, of course, if you initially think, well, we're not uh, using the profit split method in uh, the TP model, then there is no need for a value chain analysis. I think one yeah, important. Uh, Usage of, of uh, value chain analysis, as mentioned earlier, is of course in, in I think, preparation for uh, tax audits. Uh, you might have a tax inspector with also perhaps a strong uh, one sided perspective or one sided approach of uh, transfer pricing, giving him a more, how ugly the word might be, a holistic view on the whole value chain. Uh, he's able to relate, aha, uh -huh, okay, my uh, uh, tested or, or audited uh, entity in this country is actually being uh, managed, and especially from a risk point of view, managed by people located in an other country, or at least outside the country where uh, the audit takes place. That might him also help to understand that that. Uh, we mentioned already the concept of the responsibility centers. Okay, so this is a cost center. That means in uh, practice or in TP practice, there should be a kind of matching profit center that is absorbing the residual, but also therefore absorbing the, the risk and actually managing the risks. And you, you do have this information already in, in your local file or Next year you will have it in your local file because you have been uh, depicting the reporting lines of the manager and they just receive orders and, and produce but they're not, not uh, producing without any orders so there is no inventory risk. Uh, you can easier I think explain the, the yeah, function of the, of the entity that's being audited if you are able to provide a, a wider uh, view to it. Also there, I think a value chain analysis is extremely helpful in avoiding uh, yeah, arguments or avoiding uh, mismatches or seemingly uh, a mismatch. And that, I think it's, it's not something you do additionally. Most companies do have all the information required for a value chain. It's already there. It's perhaps not located in the tax department, but but yeah, speak to uh, the, the relevant people, and, and the information is there, and you can uh, bake them into uh, pie diagrams if you want to, or use any other. Uh, method or narrative giving uh, the, the wider perspective and, and avoiding disputes about it. So it's it's more than just only for your master file or, or uh, yeah, documentation purposes. I think it's uh, much wider usage and even yeah, a wider benefit than just compiling it and putting it in your document and then uh, yeah, storing it, archiving it. So it's imp important to have a good view on your, uh, your, your value chain. Where are the, uh, what are the core competencies? What are the relevant processes? Who is performing the functions? Um, um, where are the assets? Where are the risks? The, um, um, the, com the companies, the entities, the um, jurisdictions, um, where is what taking place, um, and if you if you have it, match it with your TP operating model. Is that making sense? And um, it is 
very, very important information to provide, but also take it as a stepping point to 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 um, to have it as a as a quality check on your TP operating model. Yeah, and of course, most important, yeah, where where does it help you to avoid any state aid conflict? Uh, if you have your uh, value chain analysis uh, performed, and still you you can see that uh, remuneration of of uh, any entity or any function within your company is aligned with economic reality, yeah, whereby of course state aid also fixes or focuses a lot on on fixing or or yeah stabilizing taxable income. I think there, if you make the, the proper match between uh, the, the relevant responsibility centers and the economic reality, you are able to explain already that this is a normal distribution of profit within your uh, multinational over the relevant countries. So there, therefore, we think it is uh, yeah helping you to uh, be prepared, be well prepared for possible state aid cases, right? especially in case where, where you might have a mismatch. It already helps so much if you properly explain what's, what's happening. So I think we should uh, finish our webinar, how to fight state aid cases through a full VCA, Starbucks and uh, Apple cases by Igor Peters and uh, Petri Tijhuis. Uh, this was uh, being presented by TPA Global. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, we referred to our website for the recording and the slides. And of course, you can email us for any uh, questions. Thank you.